Hi everyone, good day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the basics or the fundamentals of networking. This video is essential to learn before you deep dive into GCP's virtual networking. If you like this video, please subscribe to vSpark channel and click the bell icon for the latest updates. This is the agenda of this video. These are the things that we are going to see or we are going to discuss in this video. Let us see what is a network. In computing, two or more devices that are connected together for communication forms a network. The connections can be of physical or wireless or it can be both. Why we need a network? We needed a network to share information between the devices. There are various types of networks which are classified according to the connection types, wired or wireless, small or big, based on its architecture and topology. This picture shows the simple diagram of a network. Here you can see the network is composed of wireless devices as well as the wired devices. So these are all wired and this one is a wireless devices. Okay, these devices are called as network devices. These network devices all together forms a network but each has its own functionalities. Let us see one by one. The first device is NIC Network Interface Cards. These allow computers to communicate over the network with a low level addressing system. So the low level addressing system what I mean is the MAC address. So these NIC cards are used to keep your MAC address as well as the IP address in order to distinguish one computer from the other. A network switch is a high speed physical switch that connects multiple computers or devices using packet switching. Switches are also called as switching hub or a MAC bridge. The main function of a switch is to receive, process and forward data from source to destination. You can see the picture of a switch in this diagram. Next is router. A router is a network device that forwards the packets between networks. You can compare a router to a traffic police. A traffic police routes the traffic from one side to the other side. Similarly, a router distributes the traffic from one network to the other network. That also you can see in this diagram. So this is one network and this is one network. In between, routers are there to distribute the traffic. A firewall is a system designed to prevent unauthorized access to or from a network. Repeaters are the devices that will amplify your signal for long distance communication. Bridges are used to connect network segments which allows information to flow only to specific destinations. Gateways are the network hardware devices that acts as a gate or a door between two networks. Let us see what is the protocol and the OSI layer. A protocol is a set of rules governed for the communication. In other words, it is nothing but the language using which the network devices speaks each other. The OSI that is Open System Interconnection defines the seven layers of networking. They are physical, data link, network, transport, sessions, presentation and the application layer. This OSI that is Open System Interconnection is a reference model only. We should be knowing this TCP bar IP protocol of the layer number 3 and 4 in detail. First is IP or IP addresses. IP stands for Internet Protocol. An IP address is a numerical label assigned to each device connected to a computer network.
so this ip addresses are of in two versions that is ipv4 and ipv6 ipv4 is composed of 32 bits and ipv6 is composed of 128 bits ip addresses are usually expressed in ddn format that is dotted decimal notation so this ipv4 address is composed of 32 bits and it can have the maximum addresses of 2 power 32 i mean this numbers actually these ip addresses uh, which are expressed in ddn format is interpreted into binary bits at the back there is a simple picture shown below in ddn format so based on the usage this ipv4 address is broadly classified into five classes we are not going to discuss about IPv6 in this tutorial because IPv6 is a failure model. But IPv4 is must to learn. So based on the usage, they are classifying the IPv4 addresses into 5 classes. Class A, Class B, Class C, Class D and E. So the ranges are given in the picture. So a Class A address can hold around 2 power 24 addresses. Class B around 2 power 16 class C around 2 power 8. On further classification, these IP addresses are classified into private addresses and the public addresses. And internet routable addresses are called as public addresses. And intranet routable addresses are called as private addresses. The ranges of the private addresses are given below. We are going to construct the GCP virtual network based on these private addresses only. These private address ranges are defined by RFC standard, RFC 1918. Whatever we have seen in the traditional mode of IP addressing in the last slide came with some inefficiencies that exhausted the availability of IPv4 addresses more faster. Okay. So actually that type of addressing is called as classful routing system. So actually the classful routing system that included uh, class A, class B and class C is this. So you can see here class A can hold 2 power 24 hosts, class B as 2 power 16, class C as 2 power 8. That is exactly the numbers. This method of classful system will never change. It is fixed. If you buy class A system, you have to buy or you have to purchase these many hosts. If you buy class C, you have to purchase these many IP addresses or the hosts. Let's take example. Suppose if an organization requires a network that can hold 2500 hosts or machines, the organization should use class B license because class C cannot hold 2500 hosts. It can hold only 256 hosts. So in this scenario, we are wasting around 63,000 IP addresses by holding a class B license which would greatly decrease the availability of IPv4 addresses unnecessarily. To overcome this problem only, CIDR was introduced. CIDR stands for Classless Interdomain Routing. So this traditional method is called as Classful Routing, which means these addresses are fixed. Uh, I mean the network, the subnets, everything will be fixed here. But in the, in the model of CIDR, C -I -D -R, the subnet ranges, uh, values are not fixed. CIDR CIDR is based on variable length subnet masking. CIDR allows us to define prefixes of variable lengths, making it much more efficient than the old system. CIDR IP addresses are composed of a network address that is written as a prefix. Actually, the second part is the suffix, which indicates how many bits are there in the entire address. A typical CIDR IP address would look like the following. You can see here. Now it's quiz time. Please answer this quiz by clicking the right top corner of your screen. The question is DDN stands for what? And the options are dotted decimal notation, dotted decimal number, decimal dotted number. The answer is given in the next slide. And the answer is dotted decimal notation. 
DDN stands for dotted decimal notation. What is subnetting? Subnetting means subdividing a network into multiple pieces of networks. Here are the benefits of doing a subnetting. Routing efficiencies, it enhances security, it reduces the risk of broadcast domain. Consider the below diagram. You can see a network 17.19.0.0 having machines that belongs to test environment as well as the production environment. This is a small picture whereas in the real time scenario you got thousands and thousands of machines where the management and complexity is too high within a single network domain. This is a single domain of a network. Now in this pic you can see the entire network is divided into two pieces called the subnets that is the subdivided networks. So this is the first subnet and this is the second subnet. So this reduces the complexity and management of troubleshooting. Now let us see how to do subnetting in the next slides. How to do subnetting? First you have to identify the network ID portion from the IP address. Usually it is identified by the classes and the subnet mask. So here in the uh, last diagram we can see the network is 172.19.0.0 slash 16. When I say 16, this slash 16 is the CIDR number. This 16 tells us that first 16 bits are reserved for network portion. The next 16 bits are going to be the host portion. So this information you should learn first to do a subnetting. And you should also remember the subnetting should be done only in the host portion. We cannot divide this network ID portion. We should divide this host ID portion only. We are going to do the same in the next slides. So here I am going to consider the 17th bit of the IP address for doing the subnetting. Here my network is 172.19.0.0 slash 16. Okay. So 16 indicates that this bit is for network ID portion and these bits are used for host ID portion. So I am not going to touch this portion. So instead I am touching this portion's 17th bit that is this bit. In the 17th bit, I made it as X for your reference, this portion. I can place either 0 or 1, so which means I can have two combinations of subnets as shown. So if I place 0 in the X place, I got subnet 1 with 172.19.0.0 address. If I place 1 in the X place, I got subnet number 2 with 172.19.128.0 address. So remember that you should use the CIDR range as 17 for the subnets because you have consumed all the 17 bits for the for your network portion. So now the remaining portion is only 15. So this is reserved for your host portion. So which means that you can have 2 power 15 that is 32768 IP addresses are available in each subnet. And also the subnet masking will be 255.255.128.0. In this case, we considered only one bit for subnetting, that is the 17th bit only we considered, which resulted in two subnets with 32,768 IP addresses in each subnet. The same is depicted in this picture. So this is how your network would be. So I got a network, I got two subnets. In each subnet, I can place this many uh, machines. Here is another example where you are taking the entire third octet, that is bit number 17 to 24 you are taking for subnetting. So the remaining 8 bits are reserved for host portion. Let us see how many subnets and the number of hosts in each subnets are available after doing the subnet calculation. If you are taking the entire third octet, that is 8 bits, the permutation and combination of binary bits will result in 256 combinations, that is from 
zero 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 two all ones. So in between, you have to place your permutation and combination and to uh, construct these numbers. So therefore, we got, we have got two fifty six subnets. In each subnet, we have got two fifty six IP addresses for the hosts. I mean the machines. So the remaining portion is eight bits, right? So two power eight is going to be two fifty six. So two fifty six machines I can connect in each subnet. Same is depicted in this picture. Here I have got a network, and beneath that these many subnets are available. That is from subnet number one to subnet number two fifty six. If I use a CIDR value of twenty four for doing the subnets, I'll be getting these many subnets. So in each subnet, I'll be getting two power eight. That is two fifty six. IP addresses are available. So now you would have been familiar on how to do subnetting. Please try on your own with the different CIDR ranges for doing the subnet calculations. So this is the summary of this video. This is what we have seen in the past few minutes. Thank you from Vsparks and thank you for watching this video.